Welcome to this video where I'll show you how to create an instance of Windows Server 2016 in Amazon Web Services EC2 service. Once you've logged into the console, you select EC2 and you'll get to the EC2 dashboard. So we're interested in create instance. So if we click on launch instance, from here we're going to select the free tier images only, from which you have quite a selection. So we'll select the Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base image. Again, you're now presented with the size of the instances that you can select. We're going to select the free tier, which has one vCPU and one gig of RAM. Obviously, there is other ones available. When it comes to configure instance, it actually asks us how many a number of instances. We're only going to select one. You can select up to 20 instances. The network, we'll just stick with the default virtual private cloud and our subnets, uh, we have set them to no preference at the moment. Auto assign the public IP, we're going to disable that just now as we're going to assign an elastic IP. We're not going to join it to a domain at the moment and also we're not assigning it to an IAM role. The shutdown behaviour will place a stop. You can actually also check a box to enable against accidental termination and also CloudWatch monitoring. Tenancy, we're going to run this as a shared hardware instance. If you require higher security, you can select dedicated. So next we get on to storage. So I'm going to select the defaults. We're going to go for 30 gig and we're going for an SSD disk. You can select from magnetic, which will obviously cost less, and then higher up you can select a provisioned IOPS SSD. We're going to add a tag to this instance. So tags can be used for, for various purposes. Uh, we'll use it in this case to identify who it belongs to. So we're saying it belongs to the IT department. So next, we're presented with a security group. This is a bit like a software firewall. So there's one rule, and it's basically allowing anybody on the internet to connect to this via RDP. So we'll change our source to my public IP and we can give it a description. And at the moment, that's the only rule we'll have just so we can connect to it at the end of this demonstration. So we finally get a review instance launch screen and we can see the image that we've selected, the instance type and the security group that we've set up. We can go into the instance details storage and also the tags that we assign so we'll click on launch so we click on launch you're going to be presented with select an existing key pair or create a new key pair this is so you can obtain your password securely or for linux amis it allows you to securely ssh onto your instance so we'll create a new key pair and we'll just call this test and we'll download that key pair so now we have the key pair downloaded, we'll just click on Launch Instances. So we can see from the log that we've got our security group, authorised inbound rules are created, and it's now initiating the launch. So if we go back to View Instances, you'll see that it's running and the status checks are currently initialising. So while that's initialising, we can go in and allocate an Elastic IP. If you auto assign an IP when you're spinning up an instance, every time you shut down that instance, that IP will be returned to a pool of IP addresses. So you won't be able to connect to the same public IP each time, which can be problematic and also cause you issues. So you can assign an elastic IP, which will remain with that instance. New address request has succeeded. So on that address, we can right click, associate address, and then we associate this address with our new instance, and then click associate. So that's succeeded. Let's go back and have a look at our instance. And you'll see we're still running the checks, but you will now see under IPv4 public IP, 
the elastic IP that we assign to this instance. So now the status checks are complete, we can connect to the Windows 2016 image. So we can right click. The first thing we'll have to do is get our Windows password. So we select the key pair that we downloaded earlier. And then we select decrypt password. Then we can copy that to the clipboard. And obviously remember, store it somewhere secure and change the password. So now we'll download the remote desktop file. Click on connect. We're prompted for the password, username's administrator, then we click OK. And connecting to our instance. Thank you for watching this video.